Jordan Poole is approaching being unplayable. Jordan Poole lets it fly. Jordan Poole hasn't been there for a while. Stop payment on all those checks. We know that he has a good shot, but why is he struggling now? Why is he a little bit uncomfortable? Just how quickly the narrative changes. Six months after being drafted by the Warriors, Jordan Poole got sent to the G League before being called up a couple of months later. Just a year and a half later, he signed a multi-year deal and secured the bag. The electrifying performances, being named as the third member of the Splash Triplets, the courtside baddies, and so much in between. It's been a roller coaster ride for Jordan Poole and his four seasons in the NBA. But that proverbial roller coaster peaked not that long ago. And I realize the tale of the tape right now is Poole's struggles in the 2023 playoffs. And rightfully so, Jordan Poole started badly and finished even worse because more shots than fouls is just down bad. But before people were burying Jordan Poole, it was just over a year ago, Jordan Poole started convincing folks that this would be his team after the Steph Curry era comes to an end. When Jordan Poole played in his first ever playoff game, he immediately impressed his teammates, his organization, and the entire world. He scored 30 points on 69% from the floor and 71% from three. All in all, it was a better playoff debut than Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan. Let that sink in for just a second. At 22 years old, and as the 28th pick of the 2019 NBA Draft, Poole's playoff debut was more impressive than the debuts of a few of the game's all-time greatest players. Jordan Poole shot 9 of 13 overall and 5 of 7 from the three-point line in just 30 minutes, and he joined elite company with Wilt Chamberlain and Mitch Richmond as the only players in franchise history with 30 points in a postseason debut. A performance so good that Poole's splash partner, Klay Thompson, couldn't help but gush praise for JP saying, Jordan Poole, wow, what a playoff debut. He's just incredible. What a star in the making. The only better playoff debuts in NBA history are arguably Luka Doncic's 42 points in 2020 against the Clippers and LeBron's debut back in 2006 against the Washington Wizards. But outside of that, just last season we witnessed one of the greatest shooting playoff debuts in NBA history. And so many people, for some reason, are forgetting this amidst all the backlash Jordan Poole has been getting for the past couple of months. It was a playoff debut like that and several other huge outings for Poole in last year's postseason including four games of 20 or more points off the bench, which made Poole only the second player since 1983 to have more such games at 22 years old or younger. That production, capped with an NBA championship, gave the Warriors' front office the confidence they needed to hand this 22-year-old kid a brand new contract just before the start of the 22-23 season. You already know where I'm going with this. Anytime a very young player gets the bag, people are quick to talk about if he's deserving of it or not, or if he'll continue to emerge even after landing a huge paycheck. In Poole's case, his production is nearly identical to what it was last season, which is both a good thing and not so much of a good thing, considering you'd like to see a young player hit another dimension with his play after a huge payday. Over 20 points per game, 87% from the line, 43% from the floor, and played 30 minutes per game, exactly the same as last year. He played in all 82 games and looked like that $140 million man in stretches throughout the season. But particularly after his first handful of games this postseason, the criticism has come quickly for Jordan Poole. Again, after several insanely good showcase games for Poole in the 2022 playoffs, his performances thus far this postseason makes it seem like he's fallen off a cliff. The shot he took against the Lakers at the end of Game 1, highly questionable, and several single-digit outings like his 4 points in Game 2 against the Sacramento Kings in the first round and his 15 combined points against the Kings in Game 6 and 7 have been a sight for sore eyes, I'll admit. And Poole continued his terrible postseason performance with another forgettable night on May 6 against the Lakers, his defense has been poor frequently, and his shot selection has been questionable at best. In his 2023 postseason, Poole averaged 11.6 points, 3.6 assists, and 2.4 rebounds, which is precisely why his performances have been heavily criticized by fans and experts alike. A huge far cry from what he was doing this time last year. Now, I think one thing is unarguable. You feel the expectations of knowing that you have no other option than performing really well. You signed a huge deal like that, knowing that you were so great in the postseason last year, Poole must feel inside that he needs to play even better than he did last year because he played so well with no real expectations. This time around, I know that Poole knows there is no reason he shouldn't be the Warriors' second or third best player. Last season, the Warriors were one of the best teams all season long and looked like contenders. This time around, 
they were more of the hunters and the hunted, and were relying on consistent great production from Poole, who showed time and time again in the past how capable he is. I mean, how else would you feel knowing that this franchise put most of its eggs in your basket by handing you a contract extension that big after only your third season in the NBA? You can see it on the court. It's the rush shots, the discombobulated movement, the questionable shot selection, and looking like a daisical. It's all the result of feeling like you absolutely must play close to the expectations your teammates have for you. But speaking of his teammates, Steph, Clay, even Draymond, they've all publicly backed Jordan Poole and his recent struggles a number of times. Clay saying, we've all been there. I've had terrible slumps during playoffs, the Olympics at the highest level. Jordan is only 23 years old. Steph came in JP's defense after that rough game six against the Kings and said, we need him and he's more than capable and has shown the ability to impact games. And that's the biggest thing for all of us. His teammates showing great confidence in him is just part of the reason I think Poole's subpar play won't last, especially if the Warriors continue calling his number and put him in spots down the stretch of big time playoff games. Besides, all-star players take their lumps and go through their warts at some point. We shouldn't kill Poole for his play. And I certainly won't go as far as some fans saying that he's a scammer or question if he should have gotten the bag. He's simply way too creative of a scorer and far too pure of a shooter to be shooting under 29% from the three-point line as he shot for a stretch. We've seen him go off, delivering insane Seth Curry-esque flurries of offense in a matter of minutes. So hold your head up high, Warriors fans, and please don't bash him too, too much, you know? Because it appears that even the Warriors aren't as down on Jordan Poole as the majority of others are. Even after a bad postseason, the Warriors aren't fully convinced that moving on from him will do either side well. And my guess is that the Warriors are thinking exactly what I just outlined earlier in this video. He's young and has showed incredible upside. Do we really want to give up on him after a handful of bad playoff games? It's not like there's a fit issue for Poole either. We've seen him go bonkers with Steph and even Clay bombing away on three-pointers with Poole on the court. That being said, and I know I touched a bit on it already, Poole, apart from the pressure and expectations, is noticeably playing a more rigid, tighter brand of basketball. Just pull the tape from last postseason and watch how he operates and how he played with such conviction and decisiveness. Harking back to that game against Denver in round one last year, watch how Poole gets rid of the ball and starts moving off the ball immediately to put pressure on the defense. The confidence in his shot attempts, both at the rim and from 30 feet away, you can see the swagger, the ease in his game that was noticeably absent this postseason. I don't want to make this an entire analysis of what he did then and what he's doing now, nor should we try to dissect all the efficiency numbers and all the geeky stats. It's not a matter of him being uncomfortable in the role he's in, nothing to do with him and Draymond's preseason incident. There's no secret plot to all of this. Though some things, like his often lack of interest on the defensive side and some of his forced shots being indefensible, I still think that it's all in his head. He's simply not playing with the freedom and poise he was playing with last year or even the poise he had in stretches this season. The faster he puts whatever's running in his mind to rest, the faster he'll start looking and playing like that guy who deserved a max contract last season. This is the same guy that got sent down to the G League in his rookie season and has seen the ups and downs far worse than what he's facing right now. He'll bounce back.